I'm sitting there meaning like, someone gonna tell him? Someone gonna tell him like, that's part of him? Like, it's like, you have Star Wars blasters and Yondu with no arrow. And no one spoke up and I wasn't allowed to say anything. And they cut it. And they cut it even though the item was on cost just to pinch more pennies. <laughs> Here we are at Toy Vault. This is our local uh, collectible store. They do carry Action Force here. This stuff was gold, absolute gold. I keep like debating on like going back and buying it. It was still good. Like, like the the freeze frame stuff was was fantastic. But like the line just kept getting better. Like, dude, let's just talk about removable helmet Darth Vader for a second here. There was two figures that I was really looking forward to when Power of the Force 2 came out. It was Bespin Luke, because Bespin Luke was my favorite Luke. And they made him and his hand came off. And then when I when I saw in like, I think it was like Toy Fair magazine or Toe Marts or something like that, back when we used to get magazines and look at, I saw they were doing a removable helmet Darth Vader. And I remember in a mall like this, they would do like a toy show, card show, like once a month, like in the like the hallway area of the, the mall. And a guy was selling this and it was like 20 bucks. Now, 20 bucks back in, what was this, 1997, 98 was a lot of money. So, you know, getting this figure was like, wow. But I spent the 20 bucks and I got him and he was, he was epic. But this figure still holds up. Look at that. No one makes a removable helmet Darth Vader that good. I'm trying to remember what came after, oh, the Power of the Jedi. The Power of the Jedi stuff was awesome because they started like, like putting figures in poses like, um, you know, that that Jedi armor Qui-Gon was fantastic. They did stuff like Plo Koon. It was cool because, you know, like episode one, episode one sucked, but, you know, they followed up this and it just got better, you know? So people give Power of the Force 2 like a bad rap, but it's like Power of the Force 2 made Star Wars good, like all the way good up until like this stuff. Like it just made stuff so much better. Um, you know, I'll definitely give you know, the Kenner Hasbro team, like a lot of credit. They they really made the Star Wars line like just evolve and get really good. Shadows of the Empire stuff was fantastic. And then you got this. It's like that figure looks like crap compared to, you know, the original. The original figure was so cool looking. There's a cross sell for you. That's like how cross sell should be done. So much Star Wars stuff. Like it, it amazes me like how, like if you were someone that said, I want to like start collecting from Power of the Force 2 on. Yeah, good luck. I'm talking about thousands of figures. When I come in the toy vault, this is like the first area I come to. Even though I have everyone, it's always like just the, the, the thought of just seeing vintage Star Wars figures is just cool to me. No way. Robin Hood Prince of Thieves stuff in there. It's a good company. Jedi Luke for 160 bucks, man. Vintage Star Wars got crazy. Best been Luke Carter. Too bad the bubble's all banged up. He said she was my favorite figure. I think it's like a lot of people's favorite figure. Like Best been Luke was just a cool figure. There was something cool about seeing vintage Star Wars figures. It's just fun. What I like about Toy, Toy Vault is they, they buy up a lot of collections. So you could get like loose figures, you know? Just sometimes, you know, it's like if you're just looking for one figure, you know, sometimes they're complete like him, you know? Star Wars Micro Machines, that's where it's at. Why does he look so tiny? Does he look tiny? You know, like, they shrink these? He looks tiny. When Power of the Force 2 came out, came out with that Millennium Falcon carry case, but it came with Wedge Antilles. That was the only way to get Wedge, just to get Wedge. And back then, like, eBay hadn't come out yet. Trying to find the Wedge figure, it was like, so I had to buy the, the carry case. So just last week, they had all Action Force stuff here. And I guess it's, they sold through it, so. So, they put in night vision goggles, the quads, that plug into the helmet, like Action Force stuff. However, they don't flip up. Series five, our quads flip up. Yeah, see how low they put the articulation joint, the, the U-shaped articulation, articulation right under that hose? Had they done the, the cut above, in the chest, you could have had that hose not get hindered and not. 
now that you lowered that articulation and with that hose there, he's not going to have a good range of motion. He probably only bends that far. So had you just moved that up and made it higher, you would have had a better moving figure. But, yeah. I can't, I can't do it all for them. Oh, look, we just got this guy. Oh, but I haven't seen him yet. $200 CM Punk figure. Man, you, I want to talk about like a line that's deep. Again, it's like if you tried to collect Star Wars, it's a lot. If you go like back when Mattel started WWE till now, man, it's crazy the amount of figures they've produced like over time. Hey, I did that. Oh, hey, look, look at that. I guess they mixed Action Force over there and with GI Joe stuff. <laughs> but look at that. We got Action Force at retail. This right here. This is gold. Oh, the Toy Biz Lord of the Rings. Dude. I want to talk about a line that evolved and became like amazing. You know, the first couple of figures were weird. And then like, they like stepped up their game. It was like, like the Easterling. This was a rare figure to get like at the time. And then uh, they moved from this box to these. And then they just started coming out with great figures after that. <laughs> like how they hit all the boss fight stuff back here where no one really cares about. When we were at uh, PowerCon or ZoloCon, there was a, a vendor that had the, I think it was Mondo that did the Jack Skellington, but he had like six different heads, a bunch of different hands and stuff. I was like, I should have got him. Cause I saw this one, like this one's cool. But that Mondo one, I think it was Mondo. I'm not 100% though. But that one was that one was really cool. Oh, look, here you go. Here is that Playmate Star, Star Trek line. A little soft, but at the time, like, they were done really well. Um, wish they had one of the ones to show to compare it to. What was this? Yeah. yeah, here here's the new one. I mean the Spock is okay. Oh, this is this is the one. You want a new hot wheels? Like this config, like look how bad he looks. Looks really like all like the, the bulbous ball joints in the in the hips there, and it's like yeah. For a for a twenty year old figure, like that was cool. This is a modern day figure. Like, again, I'm not a a Star Trek fan, but they did like everything. You know, Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, all of it. You know, they did hundreds of figures. You know, this was like a Star Trek fan's dream, like this line, because of how deep they went. They did like everything. I like lost track of what I need for the Origins line. Like, because they, they started going crazy into the filmation stuff, but I'm talking like just this line. But look, look, here, let's do some more crossovers. Turtles of Grey Skull, like, come on, man. Come on, turtles. Whoa, they packaged, I didn't see this one, they packaged Bowser with Mario and a bomb. Hey, look at that. Primer Hawks. Oh, Silver Hawks with no silver, huh? Look at that. Oh, there's barely any gloss to that. Oh. But remember, you can't do vac metal, it's, you can't do it. But they'll, they'll get to it and they'll, they'll upcharge you. I don't know how you guys buy this stuff, but sorry. Oh, I really want the big Krang, the Krang Android body, but the big one, it's hard to get. Gold, man, gold. See, that, look at that cross sell. That's a cross sell. It was like, hey, Let's show the shit figures we came out with, and then let's show how awesome we got later on. Man. This Iceman, I think you put him in the freezer and he turned blue. That Weapon X was awesome. Deadpool is pretty cool. But look how deep they went. Cared like Gideon. Who cared about Gideon? GW Bridge. Kane. Like, no one cared about those characters, but they made them. Garbage bag uh, jacket gambit. 
That was a good one. Well, we're getting warm. Let's see if we can find any of the ones that I did. This is universe, but not the universe I did. Oh, here we go. Some of my greatest hits over here. This is when they changed it to Marvel Infinite. Because it was Marvel Universe and the line was fantastic. And then I took it over and they said, hey, we're going to kill the line for you. Call it Infinite Series. I don't know why. Here was the best figure I the best figure I did on the whole line was Deathlock. Best one. Ares was another great figure. Let's see if they have them. So when I was in Jamaica, I was sitting by the pool and I started buying up all these figures again because I was like, oh, I should go back and like get those again. I don't know why, but yeah, we did North Star, like what? Nice. Yeah, like North Star, I think like he never came out. So I was able to like get him out in the infinite line. Uh, the Grim Reaper was a great figure. Oh, I wish they had Ares. I'd buy him. Living laser? Yeah, cool. Like any any figure that's translucent is cool. He was such a lame character, but I'll do a translucent figure. Oh. So I didn't work on the figure. I designed the vehicle while I was an intern. I was an intern under Dave Vonner, and I don't think he wanted to do the vehicle. So he was like, hey, you want to do this vehicle? I'm like, yeah. So like, yeah, so I made it so that it had ball joints because they explained it to me the way they control it. So I was like, oh, I put ball joints here. And then I made all these movable parts. So like, I forgot that I worked on this thing. I should probably buy it. But I'm not. But I have to remember that I worked on it. I always have this like this idea of like having a room in the office that was everything I've worked on. And I don't even remember half the stuff I worked on. Oh, he's 40 bucks. Finding him with the chain is so hard. So it's like, ah, oh, he's 40 bucks though. This was a great Batman line. It was like short lived. It went pretty deep, but I remember when it came out because Azrael Batman. I love Azrael Batman. So when they came out with these two, no way. And then this cyborg Batman, there was a, an issue of Superboy. It was a Superboy annual. It was an Elseworld story. And they did this story about it's like in the future and Superman dies and Batman's a half cyborg. And it's just this cool future story. And they pulled this cyborg Batman right from that story. And I love that issue. So when I saw it, I was like, no way, that's like cyborg Batman. So I thought like this line was great. And it was like the first time you got classic Nightwing. Uh, the future Batman was cool. But yeah, this this Legends of Batman was like a short lived line, but it was awesome. I, it, this is such a common thing when companies that make Batman figures. They make Batman his head out of PVC. Every time they put him in the blister or the tray, his ears get all warped. Every single time you see it, and it's just like, come on, man, like, give some room in the tray. McFarlane tools up so much new stuff. Like, look at look at the, the amount of tooling he put into these giant figures over here. It's pretty rad. That's the, like, the fact that NECA did quarter scale stuff is really cool. I always wanted to get the quarter scale turtles. It's like, where am I gonna put these things? It's just fun. It's really fun that they did that. When I come in here, it's kind of interesting when I see like some of these legends over the past like 10 years, like what they're selling for in the secondary market. I'm like, dude, we had those laying around the office. I had a couple in my office. I'm like, really? That goes for that much? Hey, look, there's my Molten Man. I did that Molten Man. I should probably like take those out of the package and build that Molten Man. He's pretty cool. Whoa, there it is. The DC collectible Batmobile. See, man, that line was great. See that that NECA Keaton Batman back there? Oh, why that thing was so hard to get. Everywhere I see it, it's so expensive. But it's like, they did a great job with him. He looks great. One of the greatest toy lines ever right there. Look at it. It just looks cool. Part of me is like, I want to buy it again just because it was just a fun line to collect. 
these Gamerverse 2 packs, I got to do a lot with these. And the fun part about these was we did, you know, this is when uh, this Contest of Champions, which I was playing, the app was really cool. But this this Civil Warrior, he was a fun character. So I, I did this two pack and then I got to do um, a Ryu and I got to do Mega Man because it was this whole Gamerverse initiative. They were doing the new Marvel versus Capcom. So I'm trying to remember, I think it was Black Widow was paired with Ryu and Iron Man was paired with Mega Man. So it was so awesome that like in my career, I got to do a Ryu and a Mega Man. Like that's pretty awesome. And they were great figures. They turned out to be really cool. So that's, you know, some fun ones for me. This is one of mine. So this, I'm pretty sure I think I've talked about this. So we brought back, um, you know, once Marvel Universe, you know, we started cutting articulation and making dumb down the figures. Someone had the idea to bring like move, like bring them back for movie figures, but like make them highly articulated and like premium. So I was excited. I'm like, yeah, I get to do movie figures. Star-Lord and Yondu. Obviously Star-Lord comes with his blasters. Yondu, if you notice, has a hole in his arrow sheath because I did this figure and he had the big arrow trail. Like it was big. It was like the, like the one that the Six and Legends did. But it was like, you know, cause it was like, how, how are you gonna not have an accessory? Now, this item was on cost, which means when we ran the numbers at Hasbro, we had our meetings, we said, all right, this number's on, this item is on cost. And then the VP of marketing, who was greedy, said, no, let's pinch some more pennies out of this item. Get rid of that, that arrow. And I'm sitting there meaning like, someone gonna tell him? Someone gonna tell him like, that's part of him? Like, it's like, you have Star Wars Blasters and Yondu with no arrow. And no one spoke up and I wasn't allowed to say anything. And they cut it. And they cut it even though the item was on cost just to pinch more pennies. So when I, when I rag on Hasbro and you guys get mad at me for it, it's because they do things like that. I tried to make a better item. I made a good item. And then they killed the item by removing that for no reason when the item was on cost. If we were over cost, okay, I can understand. It was on cost and they cut it. So yeah, there you go. But it's stupid stuff like that, that happened all the time, all the time. Again, if something was, was over cost, fine. I'm not gonna fight you on it. Okay, we're over cost, we're over cost. But it, it was under cost or not even under, I think it was like right at the, thre thre the, the threshold. We had like a certain percentage, it was called VM. We were at our mark. No, pinch some more pennies out of that. It's like, man, there's some more of mine. I did the Star Lords and the, oh, they, this is the reissue. Because mine didn't have Infinity Saga, they reissued that. That's my Black Panther helmet. I don't think we're gonna buy anything from Toy Vault today.